What's going on YouTube? Clover Bells here back with another VGC Spotlight video and today we're covering the third and final starter for uh, Scarlet and Violet and that is the grass starter Meowth Garada. So in the previous two episodes we did the fire one, uh, Skeleton Dirge, we did the water one, the duck, Pokeball Ball, and now we're finally doing uh, the ever so controversial bipedal grass cat Meowth Garada with a dark typing of grass and dark, right? So. Uh, you know, before Scarlet and Violet was released, uh, everyone was debating whether uh, Sprigatito would be on four legs or would it be on two legs. And then you saw the memes uh, with this thing and Incineroar, once they saw that, oh, it's a, it's a cat, it's a dark type, uh oh, but now what? <laughs> uh, but once again, uh, the grass starter is on two legs, but uh, is it as uh, similar to Incineroar as we thought? Well, that's, that's what we have this video for. So, um... Uh, if you look at, again, Miascarada, so we, we have to look at the typing, uh, we have to look at the stats, we have to look at the ability, uh, and then from there we'll take a look at uh, the moves that it gets uh, to try and see if we can uh, min-max uh, with the moves with the stats, and then we'll look at a potential partner, partners I should say, uh, that we could uh, try and put this on a team for, uh, just so that we can fully utilize it to its, uh, its extent, right? So. Uh, but again, there's no rank ladder yet, you know, so there, this is all like speculation and theory crafting uh, But from what I've seen uh, That I, I have a few ideas on how to make this thing work uh, But yeah, let's take a look at uh, the stats first and then uh, we'll go from there. So let's start start from there Okay, just uh, right from the get-go on uh, just with the stats again, you know Remember what we said about Quaqua ball and you know the bulk being you know not super good and then the speed tier being middling well one of those things is true here uh and look at this bulk this is the frailest of the three starters so this is as maybe of a glass cannon as you get but the tax side is just not that good right 110 i mean that's not like bad it's it's still like solid you know base 110 attack uh and what it does get this ability called protein right and it's a very very good ability actually uh that was recently nerfed uh in Scarlet and Violet, so you can only change your type once, okay? So, it, whereas in previous generations, uh, that was not the case, you can do it every time, but now you can only do this once, um, and so you have to consider what kind of movesets I would have, uh, which we'll get to in a second, but back to the stats, um, 76 HP, 70 defense, 70 special defense, you know, not not great, right? This is worse than Quaqua Ball, pretty much. Uh, so, it's very frail, uh, but again, Unlike Quaqua Ball, it has the a very high speed stat, you know, and it's the highest of the three. So at the very least, you got this going for it, um, because now you know as long as you can outspeed certain threats in the meta, you know, along with this ability Protean and maybe something like a Life Orb. Okay, now maybe we can actually sweep with this thing, right? Uh, I know it doesn't have Moxie like Quaqua Ball, but that's okay, all right, because you can still deal good damage with uh, the coverage that it gets, and we'll take a look at that in a second, but. Overall, not impressed by the bulk. Uh, the speed is very, very good. Uh, the attack is above average. It's solid enough where like you could say, okay, this is kind of respectable, right? This is a little bit respectable, I would say. Um, but yeah, it, just in my opinion, you know, I think there, there's better options. And if you were to try and make a, uh, use a physically sweeping Pokemon, like why not just use Roaring Boon, for example, right? You still get that dark typing and you do a lot more damage and you have better bulk. All right, and it's also very fast as well, right? But if you wanted to use Miascarada, okay, sure. Um, there's a few sets that you can try that we're gonna go over, but uh, in terms of the stats, again, quite frail, decently hitting, very fast. So two out of three almost, maybe 1.5 out of three, really. Uh, but yeah, it, it, let's let's now le del delve in deeper into the typing. So Grass Dark, sir, so you're weak to fairy, you're weak to fighting, and what are the notable mons that uh, are you know fairy and fighting type for example and also but we don't really expect the bug typing right so um let's look at fairy types uh that miascarada could fear all right so azumarill very very strong pokemon i expect it to do very well so we gotta watch out for this thing this thing the 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 cake dog thing all right pretty it looks like a good body press mon but other than that all right sure florgus uh very good Spadev, special type. Okay, yeah, you know, this is one of my favorite fairies, but I don't know how it's gonna. I don't think it's gonna be that great competitively. This is one that it has to fear. Fluttermane, you know, that ghost fairy coverage. Uh, Gardevoir, again, another one. 
you know, Grim Snarl, Spirit Break, you know, Fairy Coverage, Hatterene, Iron Valen. All right, so there's a lot of Fairy types that you got to be aware of. Um, but you outspeed all of them, so that's good, except for Fluttermane. And we'll get more into Fluttermane in a second. All right, these are Klefki, no. Mimikyu is a Trickum thing. Um, screen Tail is always an interesting option. We'll, we'll do a separate video on Screen Tail, but Sylveon, again, another Pokemon that we, we expect to do very well. Um, <laughs> wiggly Tough, that's fine. Tinkaton, I, I mean, maybe, but yeah, and then this, these things we don't really care a whole lot about, right? So, a lot of good Meta Fairy options that you gotta be aware of, uh, but you know, we, we do outspeed all of them except for Fluttermane, so there's that. Um, what about like, again, with the grass typing, like fire types, um, we'll take a look at there. So of course, Arcanine, maybe the most used fire type because of Intimidate. This is the new Incineroar until Incineroar comes back. I don't know how good Armor Rouge is going to be. Maybe in Trick Room it could do okay, but that speed tier makes me think otherwise. I think there are better options. Uh, same thing with maybe Serulege, more or less the same idea there. Uh, Chiyu, I could see doing very well. I gotta watch out for that one. Iron Moth, maybe. Uh, Rotom Heat, yeah, okay, sure. Uh, Talonflame, Tor Torco Volcarona, all right, these are, again, good options. So, um, who do we actually outspeed here? Uh, I believe pretty much all of them, so you just gotta be, maybe even like Terra Water could be a good option, but I, I, I just don't know if it's worth it uh, for a Miascarada. So there's that. Um, flying types, again, there's also good flying type options, uh, let's see here, that we also have to be aware of. So, Braviary is something, you know, it's bulky, uh, Gyarados also, what else we got here? Uh, Pelipper, those rain teams are interesting, maybe Salamence, maybe Squawkability, these are B tier mods in my opinion, they're okay. Uh, there's talent Flame again, of course, but and then the rest just goes, yeah. All right, uh, I mean, sure, there's there's some threats there, but you know, nothing too crazy that we want to like, you know, get get go nuts over bolts over. Um, so we what we covered fire flying, then we did fight. Oh, the fighting option, right? That's what I wanted to also look at. So fighting, uh, there's some interesting threats out there. The annihilate could be a thing. Uh, I'm not so sh I'm not so sure about this though because of this ghost typing and and uh, overall, but maybe Bra Breloom could be an option. I think people are sleeping on this thing. Um, Great Tusk, another one. Ground fighting Hariyama could be an interesting thing. Iron Hands for sure. This is like one of the premier options in Trick Room that you want to be afraid of. Uh, but yeah, a lot of this stuff, like Trick Room, is, is the key, right? Because Miascarada is very fast, so if you just put in Trick Room, this thing is not doing anything. But we have a way around that, and I'll get to that in a second. The Paldean Tauros, but again, we have our Grass Typing to help us out there, so... Uh, Alright, sure. But, yeah. Nothing else that's too crazy about here. So, again, we've talked about some of those threats in terms of typing. Um, and a lot of them can be slower, which means they're, you know, Trick Room is very dangerous, but we have a way around it. So... Now, let's take a look at some of the movesets where we can consider building uh, for Miascarada. Okay, so you always want to start with the two stat moves, right, that you get and then just go from there. So let's let's do a little filter here with, uh, with Grass. Uh, and again, we're not going to be doing special attacks, we're just going to be doing physical attacks because we are a physical attacker. So we'll ignore all of these. Um, Petal Blizzard is something that's interesting that could be played around with um, at some point. This is not optimal though, however, because you're hitting your own Pokemon. I guess if you have something like Telepathy that could be used, but again, you know, nothing too crazy. Seed Bomb, at first glance, looks like a good option, but then you go down the list and you find your signature move called Flower Trick, which means it says it, it always results in a critical hit. All right, it does not check accuracy either. So that's, how, that's actually a pretty, pretty good move um, because, you know, but if you think back to Sword and Shield, what was that thing that always crit? Oh yeah, it was something called Urshifu, right? The Urshifu is always crit. So now you have this thing with Flower Trick. Um, so that's always good, especially if you have like a Life Orb item. Um, so I think that's good. Now in terms of dark coverage, all right, it, it has a few couple good moves. So, uh, oh, it's, oh, it also gets Fake Tears. That's actually good. And a fast Fake Tears user is actually pretty good um, because then you can have a slower special attacker take advantage of that. So maybe a supportive Sash set 
uh, which is actually coming up. Uh, could be a thing for Miascarada. Um, there's no Whimsicott in this gen yet, so uh, yeah. But then again, you can just use like Grimstone, right? Because Grimstone also gets fake tears. Um, but yeah, discussion for another point in, in the video. But um, in terms of dark coverage, all right, foul play could be interesting, right? But I feel like this is only good if you're like bulky um, to, to be able to uh, make them pay. Uh, knockoff, I think, would be the ideal one here as all with uh, Sucker Punch here. Ooh, it gets taunt. That's actually kind of cool. Um, and then these are just not uh, that great. So, um, knockoff could be a thing. Or if you want Sucker Punch, I think those are also pretty good. Um, but yeah, knockoff for sure. And again, don't forget you have Protein. Uh, and then from here, you know, maybe another third coverage just because of Protein. So, you know, if you think you're getting hit by like uh, a flying type or fire type or, or a fairy type move uh you know what else can you do to, to help you out there uh so let's look at what else in terms of coverage you can get all right we're not going to use acrobatics um does get this other oh does get play rough so you can become a fairy type uh so this way if you're taking close combats right maybe you can go with the defensive uh switch into play rough here uh, so there is that option. Okay, you, no, that's not. These are two special attackers. Um, Shadow Claw. Uh, I don't know if that's worth it. I don't think we need that. Uh, does get Thunder Punch though, so that's interesting. Oh, U-turn. Okay, so U-turn could be a thing, right? With the the pivot move. So I do like this one, right? Um, over the player off just a little bit, and then in your last slot, I think Protect is ideal, right? So. Um, yeah, because then if you, you know, if you don't like the situation, you could just pivot out of there um, and then just go into something else. But uh, I, I think U-turn is, is ideal uh, with these two uh, moves here with Flower Trick and Knock Off, right? So um, what else is actually usable? Um, I know we put Protect, but let, let's just keep going down the list here. Um, there is, ah, that's Aerial Ace. No, I don't think we need that. Uh, these are special moves. Copycat, okay but not prankster so i don't know if that's great um no giga impact leap fidge low sweep okay speed control move right uh 100 chance to lower the target speed by one yeah i mean this is another good one like low sweep right so that could be good and you're fast right so you can use low sweep get speed control that way um and then you know maybe the your partner pokemon can pick up from there uh what else does this thing get um Scratch, uh, slash, okay, no. Uh, take down, trail blaze. Okay, so trail blaze can raise your, your own speed by one, so that could be something. But we're already faster than a lot of the other stuff, so I don't know if this is good. And, you know, I don't really want to have two stab grasses. So, yeah, I think, like, U-turn, player up, and low sweep. Uh, these are all, like, pretty good moves, but um, I guess if you want, like, low sweep for speed control, uh, then you can have protect uh in this slot so i think that's okay uh or if you want your pivot move where if you want u-turn i think that's also pretty good uh and then this is your your fast sweeper right so then from here i mean honestly you can just do like a jolly set here you know where you can just go max speed and then just optimize your hp a little bit um and then just put some in the in the attacking set like this i think this is okay right because again with 159 you know Again, divided by 10, 15.9, uh, you're only taking 15 points of life orb chip per turn. Uh, so if you break the threshold like this, for example, where if I go to 160, um, 16 damage per turn, all right, versus 15 damage per turn if I do this. So go figure. Uh, but again, if you just want to do like max max like this, um, that's also fine. Uh, I, I rather do this for a focus asset, which is coming up, but. Um, again, with a little bit of balance with the life orb optimization, at least you get some respectable bulk. <laughs> not really. But this is like not, this is kind of frail, but at the very least, uh, you get something, right? So uh, go figure for that. It's, again, it's just like okay, you're, you're critting, so like okay, yeah, it's a pretty strong move already. Um, I'm I'm just not impressed by this bulk whatsoever. But uh, yeah, this is one set you can run uh, with this. But then you have to other, I'll also consider a uh, couple of options. Like I do want to outspeed Dragapult and I do want to outspeed the fastest uh, other fairy besides uh, Fluttermane. So let's take a look at that. Uh, so here's Fluttermane. 
All right, I can't really outspeed this uh, but with my base stats, so I gotta look at something else um, in terms of what I can do. Uh, so the Iron Valiant, uh, we can outspeed. So what we can do is sacrifice a little bit of speed and add to our bulk or attack, and then you know we can outspeed the Iron Valiant, right? This thing is actually gonna be a pretty good mod. I like, I like what it has with the speed and this attack set. I just wish all the special attacks just went somewhere else. Um, but Quark Drive is a great ability. But yeah, I mean, now let's take a look here uh, at another potential set that we could use uh, with Miascarada. Okay, so remember how I mentioned also that uh, a lot of threats could outspeed it in Tricoon. Well, what if there were a way to stop that? Now I did, now you, you do have access to Taunt, uh, so you can always stop it that way, but the problem with Taunt is um, if there is follow me redirection, I know we can technically Excuse me bypass the Among Us stuff and the the other grass thing brute. Uh, what was that other thing? Um, God Proto synth, but oh yeah brute bonnet. That's what it was called, but like, you know, there's still in DD There's still other follow me stuff uh, that we have to be aware of so I don't like necessarily taunt. I do like the fact that it gets access to Trick Room. That's kind of good. And then focus Sash with this. Um, so now what you could do, like now you're thinking like, okay, remember Urshifu, it also ran a Sash, right? So why can't this also run a Sash? And now we're faster than Urshifu as well. So Power Trick, uh, that's not what it's called, right? It's Flower Trick, <laughs> Power Trick. Flower Trick is there. Um, and then what else do I want? I do want my, my knockoff. Uh, and then maybe even my U-turn or, you know, the, the other move that I said, the low sweep speed control move. Um, so you have that option. Okay. Uh, but, you know, you could flip the trick room and then also have a potential trick room sweeper on your own team as well. And then for this, uh, this one you can just do straight up 252, 252, right? Um, jolly, right? Yeah, jolly. And then now you have a, a, a flipper of trick rooms. Right, and then you can just go hyper offense most of the way and then just have this in your back pocket in case you need to use it, right? So uh, this is a Sash Trick Room set. So, you know, if you need to deny it or if you have no way to deal with it on your team, this is one Pokemon that can get it. Uh, and you can surprise the opponent, right? Because you normally wouldn't expect Miascarada to run Trick Room because it's so fast. Uh, and that's the thing with like fast Pokemon that get Trick Room. You don't expect it, but because they get access to it, uh, you're, you're able to pin your opponent almost, right? Because, you know, every time they click Trick Room, you're going to do it too. Uh, and then you have to play those mind games, right? So this is one another kind of set. Uh, but now let's talk about the other two sets that I mentioned a little bit earlier where we can outspeed Dragapult and, and Iron Valiant. So let's look there. All right. So if I wanted to outspeed, for example, a Dragapult, right? Again, with Dragapult, you have to know what speed tier it hits. And if you remember from your short and sh sword and shield days, uh, this is 215, two, 213, I'm sorry. Um, where if you just went full natured investment, uh, this is it, 230. So you need 214, right? And of course you can go speed creeping, the speed creeping game and just go like uh, one or two points above that number. Uh, but yeah, so what do I wanna do um, with uh, trying to ask me Dragon Ball? So uh, in order to calculate that again, you just have to divide by 1.5. Right, so what is 213 divided by 1.5? Uh, that's 142. Okay, so with 143, I should be able to outspeed Dragapult. And the cool thing about Miascarada is it can do that without any kind of speed whatsoever. So if I were to just take away all the speed and go, for example, Adamant Nature, I do that already, all right? I, I do that already. And now what I can do is uh, go with a bulkier set where I can outspeed Dragapult this way uh, and then just go more attack, hit the third bump here, 176. So you see how you went from 174 to 176. And now get a little bit more bulk where I can optimize my life work chip. Uh, I'm gonna go to 179 here. And then I have 32 EVs left to play with in the bulk. So I'm just gonna break it up evenly uh, and just uh, have a little bit in both defense and special defense, right? I don't have a damage calculator updated at the moment. Uh, that's still being in the process of updated. So until then, we can't really count for any like huge hits uh, but you know, at the very least, this is a good starting point. If you had a, a slower Miascarada, right? Uh, that wanted to still outspeed Dragapult after a plus one boost, uh, where that would come from uh, on the rest of your team. Okay, so this is a bulkier Miascarada, uh, or you can go for outspeeding 
uh, the iron valiant, right? So let's look at that one. So I'm just gonna re-import this. Uh, still keeping the life orb because I think that's ideally what you want on it, <laughs> unless you want to sash on it. Uh, but for um, iron valiant, again, if you look at uh, the speed stat there for iron valiant, um, and I again, I do think Fluttermate is the bigger threat, but um, we can't really outspeed it with what we have unless we have like Tailwind on the team. Uh, but more of that uh, a little bit later. But Iron Valiant at the very least, again, oh, this thing outspeed base 100 without any speed nature. That's actually very important. Uh, but later on, we'll talk about that. Uh, so 184, so 185 is what we need uh, for outspeeding the Iron Valiant. Uh, so from here, all right, I do need uh, to reach that number. So how do I do that? So I need to go to back to Jolly Nature one more time and I need to uh, take a little bit away from my bulk. All right, I'll just take all of it from the HP for now. And how do I go to 185? Right here. So I go to 185 here, but then I realize that I'm just one point away from the bump. So I might as well just go to the bump. So now I'm at 187. You see how you skip 186? This is what we call that EV bump uh, that we've talked about a lot in our team building videos, especially in Sword and Shield. And it's come back here again uh, for Scarlet and Violet. So we have 187. We'll outspeed the speed creepers for Iron Valiant. Uh, and then from there, let's just take a just take a little bit more away from the bulk here. Um, and now what we can do is add uh, a little bit more attack, or just add a little bit more HP. Um, I think this is all we need for. Okay, so for life orb optimization, we'll take one point off here. And now we have um, our life orb optimize spread, where we outspeed uh, the iron valiant. Uh, so there's that. Okay. Uh, and you know do with it what you want all right but again these are pretty much all the spreads that i can really think of again it's it's a sweeper um you that also gets access to trick room um it also gets access to fake tears so if you want to do that so for example instead of like you still need that dark covers right so instead of like u-turn maybe do like fake tears okay and then just like support that way if you want or you can just pivot out but i think this is okay uh, in terms of what you want to do with Neos Karata, right? And again, you do get protein, so there's that too. Uh, but again, it's only usable once, so it did get nerfed, so I don't know how much value you can get out of that. But yeah, it's a grass physical sweeper. All right, so now um, let's talk about potential partners that you could put it uh, on a team with in terms of team building. So let's, let's look there. Okay, so for the sake of our team building comp, what we want to do is still put Trick Room on this thing uh, so this way we can deny it and just focus on being like a, a very hyper aggressive team. Um, but yeah, so instead of uh, U turn here, I think we will go with Trick Room. All right. And honestly speaking, um, in terms of this, I think we'll just go focus sash here. So we'll go with a sash, Miascarada. So instead of all this optimization, so we'll just go straight 52252. Um, and yeah, then that that's it and now we have a trick room denier that can crit with flower trick and knock off um so that's that and then just go like terra grass honestly right just get a little bit more oomph for what you want so from here i have a grass pokemon i i'm already thinking about how can i complete uh one of the main vgc cores which is a fire water grass core and i do need intimidate on my team so i can't think of a better mod to do that than arcanine so with arcanine you get that fire typing and that intimidate support uh, which Miascarada needs, right? Because, you know, you don't really have that much bulk, but overall Arcanine can help your team in general just because uh, it does what it needs to do. Whereas as far as, you know, mitigating the damage that your opponent can do with stuff like Snarl and will o uh, then you have Flare Blitz, of course, um, and then some other move that you want. Could be Helping Hat, could be anything, right? I'll leave it blank for now. It's not like a full team building video. I'm just like showing you how you can choose potential partners here. All right, and then from here, um, Again, for, I, I have the Arcanine for support. I have a fire typing now. Maybe I want that water typing. Um, I do like the Palafin. Uh, again, an aggressive physical attacker uh, that, you know, after a pivot can become very devastating. And this is our fire water grass core. So now I have to just think about like, okay, how do I like keep getting more support? How can I get speed control here uh, besides having Trickum on Miascarada? So uh, I do also like uh, Garchomp on this team, but with a Terra Steel. Um, that's because, you know, with 
uh, the dark typing and the dragon typing, you're weak to fairy, but if you have the steel coverage, uh, then you're okay uh, because Garchomp again gets access to Iron Head, uh, which is really, really nice. And this is the one that's going to be getting that life orb. Um, and you know, it's just a, a good, strong bond in the meta in general. So I got my dragon type, I got uh, a steel type with it because I have Terra, I have my Fire Water Grass Core, I could use um, some support, I could use a fairy type now. You know, so this way I can complete that fantasy core with Dragon Fairy Steel. Um, and I do like, believe it or not, I do like a Crimson on this team just for a little bit more defensive backbone, right? You get your screens with Light Screen and Reflect, okay? Um, and then from there, you do have like access to Fake Out, which is also really, really nice. Uh, you do get access to Parting Shot, another good move. Uh, and you do have Spirit Break, of course. You do have Foul Play. You, you have lots of ways that you can play this. Um, you know, this is a, another standard set, but you know, you got your, your Arcanine, your Grimstar for your defensive backbone. You have all the offense from your Palafin, your Garchomp, and the Miascarada. Now, what else can I do for speed control here besides Trick Room? I think uh, it would be nice to get some Tailwind here. And at the very least, you can see you're very physically heavy. Um, so why not just add, the, which is very prone to intimidate, unless you get one of these things like that amulet, uh, which I can see uh, happening here. So you might even give like the the, the amulet to Palafin, for example. Uh, but I do like something to deter that. And why not the Braviary here, um, which to me makes a lot of sense just because of a few things. One, you get Defiant. So if they want to lead with Intimidate, now your Braviary is going to start hitting hard with these Brave Birds. Okay, so that's also very, very not what the opponent wants to do. All right, and again, you still get access to Tailwind, uh, which is what the team needs. And if you could lead, you know, Grimstar Braviary with like Tailwind stuff, um, and then if you can pivot, you know, with Palafin or Grimstar with either U turns or parting shots, same with Miascarada, then you can get yourself in position uh, where now you, you can start dealing some big damage, right? And Flying type is good here. You get a Flying Pivot for Arcanine. Uh, just in case a ground type is, uh, is coming in. You can also Earthquake next to Braviary, uh, but I don't know how useful Earthquake is going to be on this kind of team. I'd rather just go like Stomping Tantrum here, uh, just because uh, one Pokemon uh, to not take Earthquake damage is just not good enough here, right? So, um, again, yeah, this is it. So, I got my my options here. Uh, I may even forgo the knockoff for like low sweep and then put the dark move here with like foul play, but honestly, here, again, you got your Fire Water Grass Core with Arcanine, Miascarada, Palafin. You got Trick Room to deny potential Trick Room. You got Tailwind for your fast mode of speed control. And then you have the defensive backbone with Grim Snarl and Arcanine clicking screens, clicking Snarl, will o and Intimidate. And then Garchomp and Palafin and your Miascarada are, are your, your sweepers, right? So this is it. Like, this is just like something very general. Again, I still wouldn't use this. I'd probably replace this with like some other special attacker with uh, that that can also like stop Trick Room, uh, but in terms of like having Arcanine and Garchomp on the same team with like uh, the the defensive backbone here with Grimmsnarl and even the Braviary is actually not too bad. Uh, but yeah, again, this is how this is what I would do just on first glance. Um, I'm not saying there's no other way. Of course, there's plenty of other ways. But in terms of just composition wise and just building with cores or things that are like good in the meta game like art like these are all like good pokemon in the meta uh besides the miascarada and that's kind of how you have to do it uh, but yeah um that's gonna be it uh we have now covered all three starters and i have to say i don't like any of them <laughs> i actually don't like any of the starters i think they're just not too great i think they're because of the paradox bonds they're they're just better options competitively um if i had to pick one i guess the skeledurge just because it's bulky um, and it can be used a little bit in Trick Room, but I don't really like the other two at all. Um, I still don't even like Skeletor Dirge that much, but they're just, they're just better options. And this may be like the first gen where like, I don't think any of the starters are that great. <laughs> all right. So yeah, let me know what you think of the three starters and let me know what you think we, of what we came up with uh, in terms of ideas for Miyaska Rada. Uh, but yeah, we'll be back with another Spotlight video in the next one, guys. Peace out and have a good one.